Hi everyone and welcome to our virtual open event. We're really excited to get started. Today we'll be focusing on our Abbey Park campus and to kick everything off, we're going to be starting with our Uniform Public Services team. So let me bring them on screen and they can introduce themselves. Hi Dave, you okay? I'm good, thanks Victoria. Okay, thank you Dave. And I'm just, um, if you give us a brief overview about your role in Uniform Public Services and your experience in the industry. Yeah, okay. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Dave Rose. I'm the Programme Area Manager for Sport and Uniform Public Services. So I sit above uh, the teams and I make sure that you guys that are coming on with us get the best possible experience that you can. Um, I also deliver some of the units currently on the Public Services courses, uh, mainly linking to my background. Um, so if we go on to that then, my background, I left school when I was 17. Uh, and I went straight into the army, served in the army as a paratrooper. Whilst serving as a paratrooper, I went to numerous different operational theatres, um, such as Northern Ireland, uh, Macedonia, all those kind of places. Um, I then trained as a physical training instructor uh, and took recruits through the training process. Uh, and then when I was after about 10 years, I moved on and I had a career with the police where I was uh, a operational police constable for six years and then kind of got into teaching by accident, really. That sounds really interesting, Dave. So not only have you experienced one industry service, you've experienced two. So you have a very broad interview over all of the industries. That's fantastic. Uh, and let me just introduce Mark as well, who will be joining us. Hi, Mark. Good afternoon, Victoria. Hello. How about you give us a bit of a, an introduction and tell us a bit about your experience in the industry? Okay, so I'm Mark Burns. I um, work uh, at the college as one of the two programme leads for public services. I look after the level three uh, courses, year one and year two. My background is that I was uh, in the police for 30 years. I originally joined West Yorkshire way back in the mid 80s. So that's quite some time ago. Um, and then um, in late 80s, 18, 1989, I came to Leicestershire um, as an operational police officer stationed at uh, Hinkley initially. Um, I worked some time up at Loughborough. Uh, and then I started to do some work in schools, colleges, youth groups, looking at education and young people and the law. Once I'd done that, that got me into uh, the youth offending service. And I spent my last five years as a seconded police officer, uh, looking at young people who were getting into trouble, um, doing assessments on why they were getting into trouble and then writing intervention plans to help them to uh, stay out of any further trouble. So that was an interesting finish to my career. That also led me into teaching, um, which I've been doing now for 12 years. Um, first four years I did part-time while I was still at the Youth Offending Service, but recently uh, I've worked here at um, Leicester College as a programme lead. That's really great, Mark. So it's really interesting that not many people probably would know this, that you're not only worked in the industry, you're now passing your knowledge on to the future generation when they want to go work in the services too. So yeah. why don't we get started today and let's get more information on Uniform Public Services. So just bear with me one minute. Okay. So we're going to have a look at uh, an overview of the courses, really. The um, first thing that I would start to tell, talk to you about is a little bit about our teaching team and the kind of broad experiences that the team bring to them. I'm going to talk about the actual um, programmes themselves and then have a look at what the requirements are that you will need to come on to uh, any of our courses. Um, You've already uh, been introduced to Mr. Rowe, who is our programme manager. Um, we've worked together at a couple of uh, places now. I think we go back about 12 years altogether. Um, and um, the other programme lead, who's unfortunately teaching at the moment, so can't join us, is Mr. Gibbs. Mr. Gibbs has a um, very strong background in um, 
public services, particularly the armed forces. He was a company sergeant major when he retired after 22 years service. Uh, and as you can possibly make out from the badge, he was in the Royal Military Police. Um, he does a lot of work with students around uh, discipline, behaviour, uh, about uniform. Um, we have regular um, parades to make sure everybody's prepared and ready for um, their day's work. Uh, the other lecturing staff are currently uh, Mr Swindon, who is our Outdoor and Adventurous Activities Specialist. Um, he's got a background in sports science, but he also served in the uh, Army Reserve for almost 10 years. Um, so he has a public service background as well. And our final lecturer is Miss Morgan, who, again, works mainly on our health and sport uh, related and fitness uh, units. Um, her background is in fitness and exercise. So um, that's the uh, teaching team. We also have a fantastic um, backup team of support staff um, who are fitness instructors, sports coaches, learning coaches, uh, learning mentors to look after those issues that you have um, or might come across that might uh, obstruct your learning. Um, we put uh, a lot of effort into making sure that the time that you have here at college is as enjoyable as possible. So a little bit about the programme, really. Um, what All courses are exactly the same. Um, regardless of what level of programme you come in at, you will do a your vocational qualification. For us, that's a public service course. That sits right at the centre of everything that you do. It's a requirement of government that if you don't have maths and English at level um, grade four, GCSE, um, then you have to um, continue with your maths and English studies. That's why they are outlined. Um, so if you um, need extra maths and English, the college will provide it for you. Another requirement of your course is you have to do some work related experience. We normally do that in the shape of volunteering. It's very difficult for us to get somebody who's interested in the army, um, first hand work experience in the army, I would hope for obvious reasons. Um, so what we tend to do is we tend to find um, and identify volunteering opportunities where you can do something that's as realistic as possible. And the final strand of your course will, what, will be what we call your professional and personal development. It's about um, taking the next steps away from your secondary school education and getting yourself ready to apply for jobs. So it's about things like building a CV. It's about things like looking at your own personal skills doing skills audits, looking at which areas you need to develop so that when you do start to apply for jobs, you can stand out from the crowd. All of our courses have an induction camp. Um, that's what one of our uh, shelters on our induction camp looks like. We tend to um, take all of our students with us uh, during our early induction period and it's for a period of three days it gives you a chance to get to know um, the students that you are going to be studying with because you will all have come from different backgrounds you will all have come from uh, different colleges different schools maybe different courses within um, your existing college but you'll need to get to know people because we place a big emphasis on teamwork. And if you are not good at working in a team, then that might be difficult for you to be able to um, be successful on the course. So it's really important we get you working as a team as early as possible. It also challenges you in ways that you've maybe not been challenged before. Um, you'll have to spend three days looking out for yourself, cooking for yourself, 
um, making sure that you're organized, making sure that all your kit stays dry, um, making sure that you're on time and in the right place for each of your sessions that takes place during that um, um, camp. Currently we're at, uh, or we go to a place called um, Wellsby Forest. Um, we, as I said, go in the um, second week of September and it's the whole of the Public Service Department. Uh, Mr Rowe uh, comes along with us. Um, all of the staff come along. So you get a really good um, three days where you meet your staff, get to know um, what the course is all about um, and make sure that this is... 100% the course for you. So a little bit then about our courses and about progression. It doesn't matter where you start, we have uh, a course that you will be able to um, come on to. I'll go through each course in a little bit more detail and the entrance requirements as we go through it. But um, you can see we start um, at level one, and we go all the way up um, to an extended diploma. Level one is pre-GCSE, level two roughly equivalent to GCSE study, level three first year A level, um, level three second year A level, and then we're looking for you to either go into work or into higher education. So that's the general progression route. Okay, We'll have a look at level one first. If you um, are coming to college and for a variety of reasons, education's not gone well for you, or you've missed significant chunks of education, or it might be that you've come to this country quite late and don't have a formal academic background, um, you can start on a level one course. We um, require that you've got um, some education uh, and we require that you have been attending a school and you've got uh, an 85% attendance record. The course at level one is heavily focused on functional skills, so building up your maths and English, uh, but it's also about building up your personal professional development and making sure that when you start to apply for jobs that you are fit enough to uh, go into whichever uh, public service you are looking at and that you have the knowledge and the skills to be able to um, be successful in an application. The level two um, qualification builds on level uh, one or you can enter directly onto level two if you have four GCSEs at grade three and above. Uh, English and maths are preferred. Definitely English, hopefully maths as well. You also need a positive reference from your last education establishment and you need an 85% attendance record. We do find that those students who are able to attend regularly are, are more successful and that's just general um, for any course that you were, would go on. Okay, the level three um, is a um, foundation diploma in protective services. This is a new qualification this year. Uh, it's the first time that our level three qualification has included um, an externally examined unit. It's only five units, uh, but there are a diverse range of subjects, leadership, teamwork, outdoor and adventurous activities, government policy and discipline. The exam is a citizenship based um, exam. So the level three extended diploma takes on and continues what um, you started on year one. Um, we um, will only take you on to the second year if your first year has been uh, successful if you show commitment to the course, so we'll require that your attendance is above 85% and that your attitude to study is such that you're liable to be successful. The second year is a more academic um, year. There is less practical activity and more uh, academic activity because you're preparing for either um, going to university 
or going into um, the workplace. Either way, you need a strong academic background in order to be successful. Um, as I said, we do have some exams on our courses, but they are not the main um, way of doing an assessment. Our main way of doing assessment is practical. Um, we do a lot of um, expeditions. We also do uh, leadership and teamwork, practical work. We do searching, practical work. We do um, a lot of um, role plays um, to demonstrate your practical skills. You will be asked from time to time to make a presentation. If you are going to go into public services, um, you have to um, be able to um, you have to be able to um, present. So we use a range of assessment methods. Our day works from nine until five. There's a very quick rundown of it there. Um, once you um, come into um, work, um, you would have to do a parade. So we uh, replicate that. So we have a morning parade to make sure you're ready, um, equipped and um, turned out correctly. Um, we teach in our slots and we teach through until five o'clock. Okay, the other elements of the course, uh, there is a fitness in, uh, element. You will need to be um, able to pass fitness tests for every single public service. So it's important that your fitness matches whichever um, public service that you're applying for. We do a lot of uh, interacting with various services. So we'll have the Royal Marines into room fitness sessions. We'll have the police come in and do consultation uh, sessions. We have the RAF come in and do desktop exercises with us. So there's a lot of uh, interaction with the different um, public services. As I said earlier, there's a lot of teamwork involved in this course. Um, so we do a little bit of drill just so that you are aware of what that um, is about. There's, it's a very disciplined course. And as you can see from the picture, uh, the there is a uniform that all of our students wear. Um, and that is pretty much uh, that, really. Um, if there are any questions coming in, I'm happy to take them. Um, so if you have questions, um, please let me have them now. Thank you guys. So let's do open it with questions. So please put them in the comments below if you do have anything you would like to ask our UPS team. Um, but let's start with a couple that we've um, looked at um, in regards to what would help you get on this course. Okay, so do you have a police cadet group? This is something that we get questioned a lot, especially with the changes and how you get into policing. So could one of you guys answer that for us? Okay, so um, we don't have a police cadet group. We have um, we have links with the police cadets, uh, and they do use Leicester College as a base. But it's not a requirement of our course that you're on the police cadets. Neither is it a require requirement of the police cadets that you come on our course. It works well if you do both, but it's not a requirement. But we do have links to police cadet courses. Okay, thank you, Mark. That's really helpful. Um, I think one thing that we want to get answered as well is what days will I be in college? You've given an overview of the structure of the day, but how many days will students be expected to be in? Well, it's a full-time course. Um, generally, most of our courses um, are two and a half days taught, um, depending on what level you are. So level ones will have two and a half days with us, but they'll also have a day doing maths and English. And then they're expected to do assignment work and research and study uh, for the other day for the other day that they're not in college. So it is a full time course, even though we're only in two and a half days. And again, level two is very similar. Level three, um, because it's unlikely that you'd be doing maths and English you'll have more time, but then because you're studying at level three, you'll need a lot more time because 
we do expect that assignments um, and homework and preparation is done in the two and a half days that you're not actually in class. Thank you. And following on from that, um, you've shown the uniform, and that's a uniform that's worn by both sexes, female and male. Um, is there any, any additional costs in, in terms of uniform or the course books that might be required by the students? Okay, so um, we charge a materials fee. Basically, that is um, because we do so many trips and so many uh, activities outside of the course, um, we take that um, at the start of the year and then every trip activity, um, every bit of specialist equipment that you use um, is all covered uh, and we don't come back to you throughout the rest of your course to ask you for contributions for a trip that we're going on. So that's what the materials fee is. Uniform um, is um, £137, or it, it is this year, um, and it covers absolutely everything, even down to the boots that you wear, um, which also double up as boots that are suitable for the expeditions that you'll go on. An awful lot of people have never been on, um, sort of walking in rough country, uh, and you do need boots in some of the places that we uh, go out to. Yeah, some of you might be used to that already, especially if you're already parked there, so you know full well you have to be in your uniform. You'll have something that you wear when you're on parade and another uniform when you're going out on expeditions. So hopefully, Mark, a lot of people who are applying for this course already know that. But if you didn't, then that hopefully covers everything you need to pay up front to get your uniform. And I think following from that, obviously, you've already mentioned the areas of careers you've been in, but what different careers can students go into or progression routes? following completion of this course. Just me to take this one, Mark. Yeah, you answer that, do Yeah. Okay, so obviously you've got the main services. So you've got your military services, your army, uh, Royal Air Force, and then you've got the Navy and the Royal Marines are together. You've then got your emergency services, which cover police, fire and rescue service, and uh, obviously the ambulance service or paramedics would usually be career um, and then you've got your what, what's classed as the other services so these are things like the prison service careers within the NHS um, some people might be interested in the Coast Guard um, but certainly from my experience and I'm sure Mark will agree with me we've been teaching this subject for quite a long time now um, and we've had students go into all sorts of varied careers including teaching, engineering, um, just about everything, security industry. Um, some people have gone and worked within the outdoor industry and have even travelled abroad to do things. The good thing with public services, um, employers like it because they recognise that you have done a course which is disciplined and that you can follow what is required of you. That's really interesting. I think it's fair to say that there is a wide, broad spectrum of careers you can go into. And as you've experienced, Dave, uh, you can go from one service to another service because it is the skills that you gain from this. So um, I just want to follow up from that and ask if any of you are viewing this um, after the stream has gone live. If you have any questions, you can post them below um, or if you email us at info at leicestercollege.ac.uk. Um, our team will get back to you with regards to answers. They will go directly to the Mark and Dave today, who will be able to answer any course specific questions you may have. But if you are interested in applying, please do visit our website. The course information is all on there and it will tell you exactly how to apply. So I'd really like to thank you guys for being part of our stream today. Um, is there anything else you want to add before we finish up? No, I think we covered most things. <laughs> That's thank you so much, guys. So, like I said, if you're interested in uniform public services, do visit our website to find out more information. And thank you, Mark and Dave, for joining us today. Okay. Okay, thank you. No problem.